before we begin the layout tour, I just want to give a big thanks to all my old and new subscribers. We just hit a thousand subscribers for the channel over the weekend, and I couldn't be happier. In the future, I plan to continue having layout updates as well as operations videos, and I have some ideas for some how-to videos as well. As always, if you like the content I am showing, please click the thumbs up button below. And also if you like, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified when there are new videos. It's free to subscribe. Thank you. So now let's get this tour started. On screen now is the entire layout design. The layout is still under construction. It's probably 70 to 80 percent done as far as putting the track down and the construction part, but probably more like 20 to 30 percent as far as scenery goes. I still have a long way to go with the scenery. The layout was designed by Byron Henderson, who is a professional layout designer. He is featured in model railroad planning. The railroad I am modeling is Union Pacific modern day uh, Southern California with some Southern Pacific from the late 80s, early 90s as well. It is basically a large switching layout and my bench work is Ikea Ivar shelving. The room is 29 by 13 feet. Uh, the mainline run is 125 feet or two scale miles. Track is majority microengineering code 83 and code 70. It is powered by NCE power cab and an SP5 booster. I now have a brief history shown with photos and possibly a cat video on how this layout became to be what it is. Let's travel back to Christmas 2019. We had just finished setting up the Christmas village and my wife said, wouldn't it be great if we had a little train running around the Christmas tree? I hadn't really been into train since I was a kid, so off I went. First, I bought a Bachman Easy Track train, N scale. Then I went to a train show in Columbus, Ohio in January. I saw a lot of cool stuff at that train show and bought some stuff as well. When I got home, I showed Buddy the Cat what I had purchased to get his opinion. Well, not enough data there to know if he prefers N scale or not. Then I found a design I liked for a hollow core door. So I started with Kato Unitrack on a hollow core door. And I've already started expanding to a table. Changed my mind again. Now I want a shelf layout like Lance Mindheim. All right, N scale, Norfolk Southern, shelf layout. Kato Unitrack. Okay, this may work. Looks like my mind is made up. Nope. Now I don't want Unitrack. I want regular track. Tear it up. I think you're starting to see why I had someone design my layout. Now I have switched to HO scale and I am ready to go. Off to Ikea to get some shelving components. Okay, now we're finally getting somewhere. Still haven't changed my mind. Okay, now we're really getting somewhere. This is looking good. Well, not so fast. Now the rest of the room is freed up and I want to expand. Let's call Byron again and get an expansion plan going. That is where we are today. Which brings us to May 2022. So let's start this tour. Right now we are outside the layout room in what is the staging area. And right now all that it's staging is Blu-rays, scenery products, and leftover IKEA parts. So the staging will be out here on top of IKEA shelves, maybe these. Um, it's going to be two tracks at least, one for the outbound hauler, one for the inbound hauler. That's the way I can stage a loaded train and then also have a spot for that return train. Um, so let's take an imaginary hauler into the room. So the hauler would come in here through the door. It's going to connect up to this track here and head this direction. 
in real life. This is headed west from what's called West Colton Yard, and it brings the kind of local LA basin haulers around. And it, um, the first stop on my layout will be right here. So the first stop the hauler drops off at here is in front of Capital Foods. It's called the Valley View Yard. Um, so there are technically two tracks, one here and then one with the cars on them. Now the main line is behind it. can't really see it. It's back here. So in this example, looks like the hauler dropped uh, two, five, nine cars. We have some cement hoppers here for CPC cement. We have some box cars and tank cars for uh, could be for Liberty Vegetable Oil, the tank cars, or Capital Foods, which gets box cars and tank cars, both vegetable oil and corn oil. So now we saw where the hauler drops off, and now we'll see where the local uh, engines, locomotives start, which is over here, kind of right where the layout was extended to the to the other yard. But um, there's a kind of a tie down track here in real life it's probably a mile away from this area where it's uh they they tie down the locomotives that run this local there um so these locomotives will be running the local for the four industries on the buena park side which is the uh, original side of my layout they'll start here and they'll kind of pull out and then head this way towards the bridge, over to the yard. So the first thing the local may want to do is knock out these four cement hoppers here. Um, they get delivered here to CPC Cement. CPC Cement has three tracks on my design. I believe they have four in real life. Um, I'm going to use this one, obviously, for the unloading track. So on the prototype here, they actually have one of these track mobiles. It's a little uh, locomotive that pulls these cement hoppers in and out of their um, their gates. So I know Broadway Limited makes some a motorized one of these uh, with DCC actually, or they had made one. I looked into getting them; they're only really available on eBay. They go for like two and three hundred dollars. It's kind of ridiculous. So I did find this model. Uh, that's what the picture I showed you was, and it's a. Uh, one of these metal kits that I have to put together. But even if it's just a model, um, it, you know, these these ones look really nice once they're finished. I've never built one of these. Um, not their cast iron or what. So, uh, yeah, in real life, I believe the, or prototype, I believe the local would drop the empty, or the loads on the outside track here and also pick up the empties. And then the, um, Trackmobile would work all the these the prototype again. It's three tracks. This would be two tracks. So would shuffle the loads um, in and out of the loading area. So so the loading area is going to be here, right? So the trackmobile in, in the prototype would just pull these forward to unload. Sorry, unloading area. I said loading to unload these hoppers. It would just dump them underground under the track and then pull another one forward and they would just unload like that. So if I'm following the prototype on my model, I can only fit three of them here to unload unless I extend this track here. Which So then this kit, I've been asked about a couple times where this model is a, it's a, a Kibri 39805 kit. I think it's called like a gravel, gravel uh, something or another. But um, pretty much built it to to spec, although I did put styrene sheet around the, the silos to make them look flat and also box this one in a little bit. And then made my own little sign up for CPC. Um, at some point, you know, maybe down the road, I'll scratch build this or try to the, the actual one, but it looks pretty good for now. It looks pretty close to the, to the real thing.
And as far as ops goes for this, this stop, you could simulate just dropping and picking up on this track, like the prototype does. You could also um, switch out the cars. You could, you could say that the, uh, there is no track mobile and that the local needs to swap these, all these out. Um, you could say that the track mobile is broke today and you, you know, whatever. So all kinds of options with this. Um, and you could get, I mean, I could do a lot of cars if I wanted to. Um, you could almost make this a whole, <laughs> whole switching job probably if you really wanted to. So that's CPC. So the next stop, which is really not a stop, is just right behind this area is Capital Foods. See here, this Google photo is about half of the building. So this model that I scratch built out of the uh, Walther's modern concrete warehouse kit is almost prototypically the same length. I still have to do the office down at the end there, where I have the cardboard over the trees. Um, but they primarily, at least from the pictures, have tank cars. It looks like vegetable oil and corn syrup. I've also seen photos of box cars, probably, I don't know, cardboard. I'm not really sure what they would bring in. Um, when this side of the layout was built, this was going to be, or this still is going to be the uh, source of most of the traffic over here. Um, you could have five, six, seven, eight cars on that spur there. Um, you could have um, various different operational features where you have to sh sh shuffle the box cars out, but leave the tank cars in. Um, maybe you have to, down here, where I have the corn syrup cars, maybe you have corn syrup cars that need swapped out, so you have to back up or take all the other ones out and then respot them. Maybe make it easy and you're just swapping all the cars. And there will also be. So this is Badger Paperboard, which is a non rail served industry on the layout. Um, it is pretty close to this area, pretty close to Capital Foods. Uh, it's like two buildings down. Um, but when I saw it, I just liked the, all the graffitied up walls. Um, it looked pretty cool. So then I was able to get a really good actual prototype photo of this, this half here to right about there. So this whole thing's a photo laminate. And then this half of the building, which has different graffiti, um, I couldn't get a good picture of it. Um, so I just went on um, and found a different building and then scaled it down and kind of tried to blend it as best I could in Photoshop. I think the color of the walls kind of matches pretty well, but the graffiti on this half is a little higher. It's, a, it's out of scale compared to this one, but it's, it's really hard to tell. Um, so I don't. So the next stop is Liberty Vegetable Oil. This is at the far west end of my layout. As you can see, it's still under construction. It hasn't been for a while. Um, mostly just a kind of a tank farm. Um, and uh, that big building in the middle. Um, this is a huge facility. Uh, there's no way I could fit the whole place in there. That'd be like 50 tanks as well. Um, <clears throat> but I think I got a pretty good kind of feel for it. I do have all these, I got 10 tanks right there and I got to um, build some other little things, but I want to scratch build this whole structure facility. Um, as I get better with scratch building, I kind of put this on hold, um, built the tanks up, you kind of get the feel for it. And uh, then I'll come back to it later. Um, it's a really big facility for kind of not a whole lot of traffic. Uh, so the final industry on this half of the layout, the Buena Park side, is forest plywood. And forest is literally a shell of itself, or a partial shell of itself, as it was on the original version of this layout um, in full size. But I wanted to, um, when I took the old peninsula out, I wanted to save uh, some of forest, and this is actually where on the line forest is in the old version, the 
previous, the original version of the layout, it was in the wrong place, but it is actually here. It borders this creek where the fart barf bridge is. And uh, I was able to save the, the back half of the, the model. I will probably rework it at some point, um, but it's down here for now and it can be switched out. And it takes uh, one or two box cars. I believe they, they couldn't really get center beam loads of lumber in the area where they unload because you have to be able to unload both sides of center beam at the same time for weight issues. Um, and there's no way, I don't think they could, so they must get all their lumber, um, whatever they get in box cars, I would guess, or some over by truck, maybe, maybe they don't even are, maybe they're not rail sort of not even sure. Um, but that's forest plywood. So now we're on the new half of the layout, the Anaheim side, the phase two side. Um, and this is the Anaheim yard, as we've seen in other videos, but the, the local power will sit there. There are one, two, three tracks right now. The hauler has dropped these nine inbound fully loaded cars to deliver to the industries on, uh, in, a, in and around Anaheim. <clears throat> Some panning down here. This is where the hauler power would tie down, does tie down for the night. So they would bring the, this is the final stop of their haul from Colton, West Colton Yard. They drop the cars and then they'll tie down. From what I understand, the crew is driven home in a car. And then tomorrow, a new crew would be driven out here, would get in these two locomotives and then bring the empties back to Colton Yard. So obviously when the, the local takes these loads out, it's gonna pick up empties at all the industries and bring them back in the yard. So then these two locomotives would pick these empties up, go back the other way to the other side of the layout and also pick up the empties uh, on the Buena Park side in front of Capital Foods. So this is the Anaheim Yard with some vintage SP power. So once the local power leaves the yard, the first thing it does is crosses the I-5 here in Anaheim. The next exit is Disneyland. You can see on my sign, I've shown in several videos and pictures. Um, the real highway at this point, I believe is 14 to 15 lanes, I think. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I had a something like that. Um, I will have 10 plus the median in the middle, which isn't really a lane, and then the shoulders. So, I don't know, maybe the equivalent of 12 lanes-ish. <clears throat> um, some things on the bridge that aren't done. So, these Art Deco columns, this is just a test piece. I will build all six of them. Two in the middle, two go on the left, and then two over here on the right. So the three in the front will probably be fully built. The three in the rear will probably just be the tops to, you know, show the image or the likeness of these. Um, and behind it is Santa Ana Street, which is one where the street running is and two where the other bridge crossing the I-5 in my in my scene is. So that is pretty much done, although I do have to um, putting it's hard to see here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. That black railing up top there. So I'm gonna put that all along the so then some other little things to finish the hill in the back. It's fully scenic in real life. Um, trees, there's, there's like four or five trees up top along the edge there. Another palm tree, a couple other trees in here. Um, so I still have quite a bit of work to do in this scene. I must say I do like how it's coming out. It's, I mean, I didn't even know where to begin when I started it and it just kind of is working out pretty well. So.
it will definitely be either the or one of the signature scenes on my layout. So I figured I'd let the train run while we talk about the next couple sections. Currently we are running down Santa Ana Street, which I'm still working on. Um, I'll probably have a little video series of this build. We are now approaching International Paper. They are a large industry that gets a lot of boxcar traffic. There is a large road right near the spur, so the locomotive must cross several times to access it, pulling the cars in and out. They could see as many as five boxcars in and out every day. They are removing the empties from international paper. They are now pushing the empties on to the rest of the train. Next we will have to put the loaded boxcars in the dock.
He is now connected to the rest of the train and is moving along to the next stop. So now we're at the plastics transload area, which is basically a two track yard. Zoom in a little bit. So the far track here, just next to the building flats, would be the transload track. Actually, have a. Let's see the truck up there. And then the second track will be um, empties. And then the next industry we'll hit is right in front of us, which is Crenshaw Lumber. So this is Crenshaw Lumber, which is probably the smaller lumber dealer of my two or three, I guess, if you count forest. It's um, one spur, can hold four, four cars where there's going to be a gate. up here by the stack, by the green car up there, um, to where I'll have to, to the operator will have to open the gate to back in. So they also have a dock here, which I just have mocked up with some sanding sticks at this point. Um, and it looks like this dock might be used more for boxcar unloading. And then um, obviously the center beams I do. I did leave room on both sides of this of the center beams. You can see I have some there to show to to um, replicate unloading on both sides. So, so then right immediately after the transload slash Crenshaw lumber area is just this one spur. It's kind of part of the area actually, but it's going to be a team track. Um, in the photos and research, there there was actually a team track. Or there is still a track there, a team dock there. The track is the track is actually still there, but this the turnout is gone, so you can't actually access it. Um, but I'm going to bring it back to life and use it as a team track for whatever box cars, flat cars, as you see here, um, gondolas. <clears throat> I'll probably use it more with the the Southern Pacific '80s and '90s. Um, operations when I do those because that's when it probably did exist. So now we've rounded the turn, the big turn on the island back there and back and into Ganal Lumber, which is the largest lumber dealer on this on this layout. Um, should have room for about four cars within the gate limits. Um, they also service get serviced by center beams and box cars. Uh, they also have a dock up there, and which I'll probably make the box cars get unloaded there. And then this whole area in here, I'm just going to fill in with some of my lumber, kind of lumber stacks, and make a nice, um, nice lumber yard scene. They do have some buildings. Um, I just have my old forest one back there now. Um, so I'll probably have buildings along the backdrop here, and then maybe some kind of shed in the foreground, since there is quite a bit of room there. But I think it'll be a nice scene. So we're now on the final area, and in the prototype, this is all part of what I call the Ganal complex, because Ganal lumber and these, there's two other industries in, on the same kind of area, in the same area. So I'm not using the actual industries that are located there, and I'm making this cold storage building here. Those of you that have followed my channel for a while probably recognize this building as one from the old half of the layout that I had to remove because it was uh, on the island. It, it won't be this building, but for now it's a nice stand-in. So I plan to have this kind of building curve around back there and have four, maybe four cold storage doors or five, depending on how big it is. So 
and then moving down the track a little bit. So the, the plan for the second building um, was to be an ice cream plant with um, be able to take multiple cars, like a, there's a box car, uh, sugar hopper, and then corn syrup type cars at the end. Uh, that's still the plan, but it's up in the air, I guess. I'm not 100% not sure, but some sort of industry, again, that'll take different types of traffic. So um, more to come. Yeah, the, the wood you see there is just, are just my modeling boards that I built from Boomer's channel. Uh, one of them was not so good, so I re rebuilt it <laughs> more square. Um, but yeah, so this area, there's um, it's kind of, what is it, two track yard, um, because the locomotives will have to run around all the cars to be able to head home in the correct not push cars all the way home. So this whole area is a big run around at the end of the switching line. You can see down here where the it's room there will be room for two locomotives to to run around. So if the train is not leave switching Ganal and then we're just kind of doing a uh, scenic Kind of around the room it'll head down the main line behind these two industries big turn sweeping turn here which isn't a turn yet under a bridge another highway bridge and then through the strawberry field area and then back over to the other side of the layout it's more of a continuous move portion of the layout because operationally you'll never we're never really going to use this um, because the train would end its day here and then move back, go back to Anaheim Yard. But the scene is really cool. I could have put more industries here, like the Orange California Industries, but I kind of wanted to have <clears throat> negative space and just a really cool scene. This Where it's located down here, I could really photograph it well, um, videotape it well. Um, it's got those big transmission towers right in the middle of the, uh, the fields. See these? So I got that kit. And then you can really see, but there's some tractors back there that are shown in the fields. And so, as you can see here, you can get a lot of cool photographs. I think the train snaking around and part of the Green corner of the bridge, the cars, um, with the strawberry fields on the left. And you have the uh, the road. It's like a five lane road on the right. Um, I might have room. I might put some of the at least the fronts of the. There's some commercial buildings right there by the edge. Possibly, we'll see what kind of room I have. And then you'll have those big transmission towers in there. Um, and then also, this will be the only area, I think, on the, the ex expansion where the, the road, or the, sorry, the track is on roadbed, because it really slopes down quite a bit in this area. When you look at the uh, videos, it kind of runs so like a runoff. So we'll have the roadbed up. So I think there's just a lot of good photographic opportunities and or video um, recording especially with the access I have to this area where the door kind of opens into the room. So I'm excited about doing that. But this will probably be the last part I build. So so there you go. That's a tour of all the key locations on Santa Ana Industrial Lead Layout.